Hello people out in YouTube land. This time I want to do something else than Bitwig. I thought, hmm, can I adapt one of my Bitwig scripts, especially the one for the Push series, to Reaper? Because Reaper is another door I also like to use. And I think I got pretty far with that one. You can control all your mix stuff, so modify devices, adjust the clips, play those nice stuff here and all these things. Before I talk you through the installation process, I think let's see what you can do with the script. And as I said, it's working not only for the Push 2 and the, with the nice display, but also nicely for the Push 1. First, let's mention there is with the download, if you extracted it, there comes a readme here. And if you open that up, you will see, uh, okay, here all the change list, you get a pretty detailed installation, which looks pretty complicated, but it's not that tough. So uh, I try to make it very detailed so everybody can get that going. And here at the end, there is a feature description. I guess I cannot show you everything and I will definitely forget some uh, very detailed features, but here you can read up all the functionality and the different modes you have and what you can do and be done in that modes. Yeah, what you can do, you can start playback, you can stop playback, who would have guessed that? You can toggle the repeat mode, you can record, you can stop record. You can double click the play button to return to the zero position and uh, you can select the different automation modes for the track. So here's latch, we can go back to trim mode. So we have a new button, a new button creates a new clip on the track and it also, it sets a repeat mode so you can directly record into the track. And the length of that clip is selected here. So press that button. So currently we have one bar, let's say we want to have a two bar clip and then you press new and what you will see you can now record into that clip which is looped here so pretty much a little bit like what you can do with Bitwig and Ableton clip recording but on the normal track and it also prepares this track for recording it sets MIDI overdub so you don't create new clips when we cycle through. What you need to do on your own that is to select a MIDI input channel. So now you can play, you can also turn on the metronome here to have an idea what you're doing. Pretty bad, but whatever, it's working as you see. Okay, what else do we have? Uh, you can duplicate the, the full track. Uh, sure, you can also undo the things. Um, we need to get out of recording. Then you can also undo everything. And if you do shift undo, you can also redo the stuff. And if you have that one selected, you can also double the track, undo that again. You can delete a clip as well and undo it again. The convert button uh, just triggers the export dialog, which can be pretty handy at some time. Okay, undo delete I showed. Uh, you can tap tempo here as well, the metronome, and these two buttons are also like with the push. That one is for changing the play position, so you can move around your play cursor pretty nicely, and tap tempo changes the tempo, so you can change it here. Okay, coming to the mixer mode. So what you see up here, we have all our tracks, also in the track colors. And if you select it, you can modify the selected track. So starting from here, you see the description up here. You can do volume, maybe do it better like this. You can change the panorama. You can change the sense one to four. And if you press that button, you can access the sense five to eight. So you can modify eight sense here. And you can also change the different modes. So if you go to volume here, you can change, uh, modify all the volumes of the different tracks at once. So you can modify that one here, change that together and like this. Mute solo works the currently selected track. It's muted or soloed and if you 
keep it pressed, you can mute multiple tracks as well and same for the solo function. If you want to keep that feature on, you can press shift and mute, then you can switch between mute and solo mode and then you only need one finger or one hand to change the solo and mute. If you want to enable recording on the track, you just press uh, the select button again, so you can turn off recording on and off, same here, and you can also do that on multiple tracks. If you want to audition your track, you can keep the select key pressed and then you see if your track is enabled for direct monitoring. So this track, the keyboard track, is currently enabled and we hear if we enable recording, you can hear it. If you turn it off, we hear nothing. What else do we have? Okay, I showed the panorama. Same for sands, so you can change multiple sands at once in that mode. Same here, toggle between sands 1 to 4 and 5 to 8. Yeah, and if you have selected a track with a MIDI uh, instrument on it, you can play it as you see. So you get the normal scale mode here, and if you press the scale button, you can change the different scale. So this is now a C major scale, and you can change it to minor, Dorian, and so on. And also say the root note here is for example a G, then we play a G or a D. If you keep the shift button pressed, you can also change the layout. So for example, now we have fourth in that directions, fourth in that directions, third, sequential, and so on. You can also change here from chromatic mode, so you get access to all nodes and disable it again and press scale again. That's the basic features of the mix mode. You can also go into the device mode. So I have my trusty Synth 1 plugin installed here and you can modify its parameters with the buttons up here. There's also two buttons here which work. The one enables or disables the instrument and you can bring up its window and close it as well. Let's go to a track which has more than one plugin. The first one here, for example, back to device. So you see here all your plugins which are present on the track and you can toggle between them. And every plugin has the access to 16 parameters. So if these are the first eight and to toggle to the other eight, you press the page in and then you see the other ones and you can switch between them and to go out again, press the page out button. And you press it again, you switch it automatically to the mix mode. Same here, if you press here, page in, you jump to the devices. There is also a browse mode here, but it's not very good because I noticed you can only change presets uh, for your user presets. So all the other presets you see, um, let's bring up the EQ window. So the presets in here, these cannot access only the three I stored. So if you go into that one, go to browse, and then you say, let's have the next one, and not even that is working. Let's check a user one, so here's nothing working. Yeah, so browse mode is more a proof of concept, but it's a little bit buggy, I think, from Reaper side, so we cannot really use it. So forget about that one. The fourth button here is the clip mode, um, which gives you access to the currently selected clip. So if there is none selected, you will see some dashes here. Clip in Reaper does not have a specific loop. So what I did here, I put the global loop in here, so this is the normal repeat on and off button. And what you can do here is you can change the repeat loop. So if I change the start, you can change here your loop to a different section of your project. And what you can do here now is uh, that clip here is selected. So if I change the start, you can move around your clip. Always aligned to a beat. And you can also change the end, so enlarge it or make it shorter. What else did we get? Uh, you can add a device which brings up uh, your add FX dialog. 
and you can also add a full track. Uh, and I added for that that you choose one from your track templates. Going back to Mix, what I completely forgot is how you can uh, uh, navigate around here uh, in your track. So basically just press the button below to select it or use the cursor keys to move from left to right. Let's add a track here. So we see some more. So you can go also to the to the next page automatically. And if you want to jump in larger steps, keep the shift button pressed and use your cursor keys to jump a whole page. Yeah, so that's the play view here. If you press the note button, you get more options what you can do. So this one was the, the playing field. And if you press that one, you get a more traditional keyboard layout. So. So you get several octaves uh, of keys. Okay, so if you prefer such a keyword layout, you can use that as one. Press note again, and we have two more. So let's start with the last one. This sends program changes, which is pretty nice. So if you go back to my Synth 1 device, have a window here, and you can now select your different sounds here. So this one gives a 1 to 64, and if you press that button, you get the 65 to 128. And you can also, for example, use it with external gear you have to select your patch on your external gear. Press note again. And the last one is clip, which is also pretty nice. So if we go back to clip, you will see we have currently that clip selected, which is two bars long. You can also change resolution. So this is uh, bars now. So you can uh, increase this to, I think, quarters and sixteenths or something. And what you now can do, you can change the length of it. And what you need to do is press two buttons. So keep the first button pressed. And if I want to enlarge it, I press a different button, for example, that one and it will be uh, larger now. And you can also do the opposite. Uh, you can shorten it at the beginning if you keep that one pressed, for example. That was not the idea. If you keep that one pressed and then that one, you shorten it. Also pretty handy for cutting uh, wave clips, for example. Setup mode up here allows you to adjust the brightness of the display. So you can make it darker and also adjust the LEDs, the, the brightness. You see that better if you go back to the play mode setup. So if I change now the LEDs, you see they're getting darker. And also you have several different options to adjust your pad sensitivity. Yeah. Oh, nice sound. The master. So if I go to the master, you will see uh, the master track. Okay, here you can also adjust uh, the, the, its volume and its panorama with that button. What I also forgot here is the ribbon. So the ribbon can be used as a pitch bender or send CC messages, or you can use it as a fader. To change the behavior, so the normal is pitch bend. Funky. Um, is pitch bend, and if you press shift, keep it pressed and touch the, uh, the pitch bend, you will see the menu to change its functionality. So here you can change it to CC. So for example, now we have selected one. So this is modulation. That's weird. You can also combine it. So we have a CC and pitch. So pitch is to the top. And to the bottom there is CC modulation. You can also have it the other way around. So. And you can use it as a volume fader for the currently selected track. You also see the VU meters, by the way. So here we go. Okay, I think this I covered most of the functionality here. Yeah, just give it a try, play around with it. And as I said, if you want to read up the details, check out the readme files.
And most of all, create some funky music!